welcome to another episode of Coast to Coast Horror with your host, me, Crystal Connor, hailing all the way from Seattle, Washington, visiting Lady Shasha coming to you here in sunny Orlando, Florida. So you guys, this is another, um, this is our very first on-site location. I flew down to come and see Sasha here in Florida. We've got like a really um, amazing weekend planned for you guys. Um, and we just came back from the movie um, M. Night Shyamalan's Old, Old. Um, we should tell you where we saw it first because we're going to do a movie theater review and then we'll get into the actual movie review. We went to Disney Springs to the 4 AMC theater to watch Old in a giant theater. Massive. We had to catch the elevator up to the third floor. Um, it was really incredible. Um, one of the, one of the um, things that I liked a lot about that theater is it's a dine-in theater and so we were able to go and actually order a, a real meal um, to take up to the um, into the movie theater with us. Some of the um, theaters have um, a wait service. Yeah, waiters that bring you the food and, and then others don't have the wait service because I think they're just short staffed. When we went in there, there was very few people working there. And unfortunately, um, some of the seats had been cleaned and at first I was a little bit judgmental about that but when you see the size of the theater which I'll probably superimpose over us talking about it it would be almost impossible for them to clean these theaters thoroughly after every single show with the amount of staff that they had yeah so I will uh, agree with her even though uh, you know what she was saying when we first walked in I was like oh boy but then like after um, leaving and then just kind of remembering how many people were there as we were um going to the theater to our theater um it would be it's a hard task and it has two entries there's a um when you first come down the escalator there's an entry there and then from the other side of the park um there's another those are both very main entries and so it could be easy to get lost in that theater it's so big mm -hmm. um what did you think of disney springs walking around there i loved it i I love Disney Springs. I was just like, um, to me, it felt like, and this is how I kind of only explain it. It's like being in the suburbs of Disneyland. Um, it, it's uh, lots of food, lots of um, places to shop for like vendor stuff. They had a hot air balloon that I wanted to ride in. Of course, she didn't want to because yeah. she's got a fair height. Yeah, I'm not. I told her I'm not going on Orlando Eye. I'm not going on that slingshot thing. I'm not going in hot air balloon. I don't like heights. That's not fun for me. <laughs> and to her credit, I don't think this the um, slingshot uh, ride looks fun at all because basically it looks like you're like being pulled from a slingshot, but like this. And mm -hmm. um, we drove by there at 1.30 in the morning because like it's like 2 o'clock, now almost like 3 o'clock in the morning. And there was still a long line of people waiting to get on this slingshot and I just couldn't believe it because it that's one of the rides I went and ride like nope we did stop by that giant McDonald's on International Drive that is incredible it is a huge ass McDonald's I had a blast like I I um ordered a coke even though I had a coke at the AMC dudes at AMC and movie theaters all over the place your soda size is too big <laughs> why we don't need a bucket. <laughs> we don't need a bucket of soda. And it goes flat really quickly. So it's, it must have been like a half a gallon of soda. Mm -hmm. And I drank like maybe this part from like that much from the top. And then when we went to McDonald's a couple hours later and got a regular sized soda, I slurped it down because it's a regular size bubbly. And it's, it's like, there's no reason for us to have that much soda at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. So let's get into old. But first, we were in Adobe. Uh, um, Adobe. Yeah, uh, Adobe. Oh my God. So the sound in that theater was amazing. Um, you can feel the ground um, vibrating. And mm -hmm. the seats that we were in were, were just like this, except for it reclined. Mm -hmm. So like that was like pretty cool. The theater itself was just like an experience all by itself, no matter what movie you're watching. Yeah, the seats were pretty comfortable. And there was a lot of space around, like there, well, for there to be so many people in the park, the theater was pretty empty, but it might've been just because we were there watching M. Night Shyamalan movie and probably everyone's probably still going to see Black Widow and stuff, so. And there is a lot of room because we were both reclined, fully reclined back and the people who were walking in front of us 
all she did was she like turned on her camera phone so she can see mm-hmm. where we were and she had plenty of room both her and her boyfriend had plenty of room to walk right past us mm-hmm. okay so hold um i was saying in the theater that uh well i've said this before in some of my older reviews that i'm not M. Night Shyamalan, even though I still don't forgive him for what he did with Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> I loved that movie. I don't care. Are you sick? Si- did I you watch, watch the cartoon that? series? Nope. That's why you love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Oh my God. If you watched the cartoon series, you would not like that movie at all. No. <laughs> it was so wrong. No. <laughs> even the fact that, okay, that's another, I could go on and on about that. Just the whitewashed casting alone. <sighs> Okay, but, but I loved it. Aside from that, I always say that he does better with less of a budget. You give him too much money, he doesn't know what to do with it. You give him, you know, trident layers and a coupon, and he will give you something beautiful. <laughs> and I think that's what he did with this. Um, I loved, I'm a big fan of um, what I call um, trap environment films. Uh, she calls them bottle films, mm-hmm. um, where they're in the whole movie a shot in one location. And um, they are, um, they went to resort and one of the um, hosts of the resort was like, hey, there's this private part of the island that not everybody goes to. We will send you guys out there for a day so that you and your family can be there. And um, that's where that movie takes place because even though um, when he's driving to there, he has to open the, um, the part of that uh, resort. It's an iron gate that he had to unlock to let them in and he uh and they ended up um having two families go there and he loads them up with a lot of food and he's like have fun if you need anything else call us but i'll be back at five right so um down the road they go to this this uh really deserted island that is visually stunning but there's really not that much to do unless you're gonna be just like lounging sunbathing. around and yeah sunbathing but there is like Two families and three kids that they weren't really watching that much. Mm-hmm. They weren't watching their kids for shit. Sorry. <laughs> Which we saw in real life. Like when we were at, out at Disney Springs, so many people were walking with their child trailing behind, behind them. them. Yeah. It's almost like I'm I, like they're in their mind going, I dare you to take my child. Just, <laughs> just take them. Because I'm not watching them anyway. <laughs> You'll bring them right back because mm-hmm. they're bad as hell anyway. Mm-hmm. But that's a different uh, that's a different subject. Um, when the movie first presents itself, um, it seems to be like, it's almost like a, um, ecological horror, Mm -hmm. um, because you're not really sure what's going on. We're, is like, we're left to think, is it something in the minerals? Because that's one of the selling points of this part of the island that the host was, um, telling the families about. He's like, this beautiful rock formation is really stunning to look at. And even though it's going to be hard for us to describe it in person, um, when I saw it on the big screen, what it reminded me of is, okay, so I'm from Washington State, obviously, and our mountains are gorgeous. If you guys have ever been up um, north, anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, our mountain ranges are really just stunning. Um, and I'm pretty biased about that because, of course, I'm a native of Washington. But when I went to Canada and saw the Canadian Rockies, I was unprepared with how beautiful those uh mountains are and our mountains are bumpy and um you know because they're made by boulders and but the the rockies the canadian rockies and the north american rockies there's it's like slate and so like what i remember when like they were panning to the characters and they were looking at the rock formation their expression was exactly my expression the first time i rounded that mountain i mean you know rounded that um drive that i was on and saw those canadian rockies open up to me it was just like stunning i had to pull over to the side of the road and i was emotional and so that's what that selling point was even though these rock formations aren't like that it is completely different from anything that's on the island because the island looks very tropical so that was like the selling point they were like oh my god these um, rocks are like maybe have um, healing properties because it's, it's like a health and wellness mm-hmm. resort that they went to and they're making specialties based on people's diets and so it's kind of like it makes it seem like it has the same effect as like a salt crystal mm-hmm. those lamps you know and so and then of course the beautiful water and the quietness and and so that's uh, when things start to go wrong that's what 
first comes to mind is what is in these rocks and what's going on with the water. You know, you just you just don't know. Mm -hmm. I liked um, the different characters that were on the, well, it wasn't an island. It was just like this area of the resort. And they gave them a lot of depth. Like there's one character that at first is introduced as like a rapper. He's got the little, uh, I would call her like an Instagram type um, girlfriend. girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you think that he's just going to be this shallow rapper character. And then you find out more about him and his background and how um, he has an ailment that he's dealing with. And he wanted to have a Zen weekend. And um, She was sick too, but he didn't tell her it's what was wrong with her because that's how they connected well, yeah, her. Yeah, they met in a chat room about their illness, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And so their connection was actually deeper than the Instagram rapper yes. um, mm -hmm. relationship. But not at first sight, like when we first meet them, you know, they're on the beach and he's like blinged out because he's a you know, tough rapper mm -hmm. and she's this super gorgeous Instagram model. And so, of course, she takes off her clothes and goes swimming to the ocean. And then we cut away to the, the family. And so the, the um, they were a little bit annoyed because the host told them that they were going to be there on, by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when they're getting into the van, the other family mm -hmm. jumps in the van too. And they're like, what the what in the world? And so um, when they get to the island, the, um, his, his, the rapper's name was... Um, Mid-sized sedan. <laughs> yeah, uh, mid-sized sedan. Like, that is a terrible rap name. <laughs> but then there's and also the rappers. Like, there's rappers named Quando Rondo right now. Um, there's another one that had a terrible name. I forgot what it was, but Qu Quando Rondo was pretty bad. <laughs> I'll probably put a superimpose some rap names that I heard over the last year that I why. <laughs> <laughs> and the daughter, she was like. Oh my God. She was like super like enamored with him. But the dad was like, leave him alone, dude. He's on vacation. Like, which is thoughtful. Right. Right. And so that's the dad of the, the nuclear family because there's the mom and the dad and the boy and the girl. And the other family is an older doctor with the, another thin blonde Instagram um, model looking who married for money mm -hmm. because she looks like she's like 20 years younger than this guy and they have a, um, a six-year-old daughter there right. I think the subtext to her was also that she came from a meager background and that's why she wanted to uh, marry up you could there were certain attributes that gave her that made you uh, think of her as oh this is a person that obviously didn't come from money and I didn't get that I, I, just that got, I got that she was just like you know, one of those really shallow beauty is everything, and she used what how she looked to get her husband and set herself for life. I didn't get her like that. I yeah, got, I did. I did get the the use of beauty, but I got it from her because she always had a sadness in her eyes, and it seemed like all she had was her beauty. Like she had that's education. Exactly. That's exactly that's all so, she had. She, yeah. So she was teaching her daughter that oh, this is in her mind. This is all I have to work with. Yep. So I got to I got to make it work, and she was it was to her own detriment. But she was clearly a, a super unhappy person, and, and she was trying to put on this you know fake exterior of being comfortable and and um, trying to get along with her mother in law and her and usually husband, people but, who are like superficial like that and just like they are unhappy right mm -hmm. because that's all that they have and and like she was always in the mirror and she was always like having this really like super sexy poses that she was, you know, posting on Instagram. And so, yeah, I just thought that, you know, like, um, some of the girls who like, um, hang around like ball players and, mm -hmm. and rock stars and rap. Some people. of them have been socialized to believe that's all they have. Right. Right. I, I even noticed it with like, um, social media. I noticed if I post on social media, Oh, I started a business or, um, this is a project I'm working on maybe two, three likes couple comments if I post a selfie oh 50 people you look great what what is that message saying I mean I can dissect it because I'm older but if I had social media like as we have it today when I was 19 that would have sent me the message that oh we don't care what you do in life we only care what you look like mm. and so it, her I mean, being younger and if, the, if you've grown up with this I'm wondering how many young ladies are getting right. that message and not recognizing that they're internalizing that and then, because her daughter is six, and she's like, mm -hmm. 
Don't slouch because dice don't like that, not realizing that she secured the bag. This man is a cardiac surgeon. Mm -hmm. This kid is going to go to the best schools School, available. Yeah. Like, you know, she can study anywhere because now she's going to inherit the money of her father. Mm -hmm. That's something that maybe that's where you were getting it from. Um, that, you know, she didn't come from anything, but like, yeah, you know, she wasn't, her thought process wasn't that of a person that came from wealth because if it was, then she would know, oh, my daughter doesn't have to do the things I had to do because she has access to things. But who was that heiress? Um, she's very homely looking and she uh, fell in love with her the stable boy. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to do this a real person. Yeah. And she's worth billions, but she's not beautiful. And so, but the guy, her boyfriend is drop dead gorgeous, like a playboy. And so like, it's almost reverse, right? She's mm -hmm. very wealthy, but because she isn't beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, the, uh, normalized standard of beauty, mm -hmm. you know, she was that, I think she's a, easy to take advantage of mm -hmm. because when she started dating him, everyone lost their mind. Like mm -hmm. they're like, what are you doing with him? He's going to rob you for all your money. And so like looks, no matter like how much money you have, mm -hmm. a lot of people put that on top of almost mm -hmm. everything. So yeah, that was, so that was the nuclear family and that family. And so they're on the beach and the dad from the nuclear family told his daughter, leave him alone. She's on vacation. The doctor immediately is suspicious of him. Like he, like he's putting up the, the beach umbrella. He looks over and he sees him and he's like, no, let's move to another section of the beach. And he's like totally looking at I the black was, guy suspiciously. I think, I think there, there was a racist subtext. Absolutely. I think Knight was right in that Absolutely. area as having like a latent racism yep. in, in, in And that him. came out later in the movie. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so here we are, we have, Everyone on the um, beach, um, both couples are having problems. The children are left unsupervised, mm -hmm. so they're doing what kids do. And, and there's a, a false sense of security because they are on a secluded part of the resort, right? So never mind the cliffs, never mind the raging sea with like, it, like think of Hawaii, like some of the beaches in Hawaii are unswimmable because the water just slams against the rocks. That's what uh, is out there. And then there's a bunch of lagoons, there's cave systems. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, right? And the parents aren't, aren't paying attention. Um, the kids are always hungry, but they never stop eating. And so they're playing um, freeze tag and then they start playing hide and seek. And the little boy from the nuclear family is in a tiny cove and he looks down and he noticed there's no fish and the girls run by him and he was like, oh, they can't find me. And then you see something like bob up behind him, bob up behind him. And it is the rapper's girlfriend who's drowned. And the way, the way you said that reminded me of um, Sir Mix and I. Sir Mix a lot. It looks like one of those rap guys' girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, look at her butt. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so she's uh, bobbing into the water and he runs out of the water, he gets his mom, um, then all the adults come up to see what's going on and then the doctor's racism is no longer latent, it starts to like rise to the surface. This guy is sitting on um, the beach, obviously in shock, mm -hmm. his nose is bleeding and that's because of his um, his sickness. Yeah, he has like some type of blood, he, he, it well, he said it was blood, yeah, he had blood clotting. Um, issue, but he didn't say whether it was um, he. I don't think he was hemophiliac, uh, like a hemophiliac, because he probably would have just said hemophiliac or he. Or hemophiliac. maybe a lot of people don't know what that is, but his nose did not stop bleeding. Yeah, and we don't know why. And so then this is how the dynamic of the two men um, talk to him. So the first thing that happens is the nuclear dad asks the doctor if the doctor hit him. He's like his nose is bleeding, so. Why did you, like, what's going on? He's, he's like trying to figure it all out. And the doctor was like, what did you do to her? Right? And so then this is how this dynamic is set up between these three men. And so, um, as they're trying to figure out what to do with the body, um, his mom, the doctor's mom starts having chest pains. And as the doctor walks away, he's like, well, we're all in it now. Like, why would you say that? Like, and he was like, we're all responsible for this dead body on the beach. So that was like really weird. And so he goes off to 
uh, see what's going on with his mom. And then that's when the mom from the nuclear family is like, there's something wrong with the children. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with the children. And so the doctor's being pulled in two different directions and she's trying to tell him she's not being hysterical. Um, and then things start to speed up. But right as things start to get a little bit confusing, another couple shows up on the beach and they're like, yes, we can go and get the driver because he can't be that far from here, right? They just dropped off these two couples and uh, but they can't they can't get the um, the driver and they can't get a hold of anyone at the resort because there's no cell phone service. Mm -hmm. And um, there was something I was going to add about the families. Each family or couple has to deal with an illness. Oh, there's another couple that we didn't mention that arrive a little bit later to the beach, and that is a couple where the husband is a nurse, nurse, and the wife is a therapist. And but she has um, grand mal seizures. Yeah. So she suffers from epilepsy. That's what it was, epilepsy. And so um, they. <laughs> So we're going to have to, it's going to be a little bit of spoiler-ish because there's no way that we can explain what's going on without telling you guys this. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone is freaking out. The new couple is there, the nurse and the therapist. And um, one of the things that the children were doing before they left to go to the um, secluded resort is they would run up to some grown up and be like, hi, what's your name and your occupation, right? And then as soon as they would tell them that, they'd be like, okay, bye, and they would go to the next adult, right? And so those guys remember those small children. And so when they get to, everyone is freaking out, and they're sitting on the beach, and the boy asks again, he's like, what's your name and what's your occupation? And, and the nurse is like, okay, because the person who had asked him that on the main resort was six. six years old. Right, and um, his sister was 11. Mm -hmm. But these children are preteens, both of them, right? And mm -hmm. so they're freaking out. He's like, why would you, um, like, is this some type of a game? And then mm -hmm. his wife's like, they feel uncomfortable. You know, we'll just roll with it. Like, she's, you know, got on her therapist hat. And so when the mom comes, she's like, have you seen my, she's looking at these teenage kids. Mm -hmm. And she's like, have you seen my children? And then the children are like, mom. Mm -hmm. And so then this is where everything is just all crazy because it takes her a moment. Like when the boy, like the, the girl is like 16, super curvy, you know, she's not a little girl anymore. And, um, <laughs> kind of remind me of, um, the others. <laughs> the little girl was sitting there, but, but she was an old lady. I am your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And she's like, why are you looking at me like this? And, but then something, cause you know, your children, you right. She realizes that those are her kids. Like he, the boy runs and hugs her because he doesn't know what's going on because they don't know that they've aged, you know? Um, and so now we have all of this going on. Um, by this point, the doctor's mother dies, um, the dog dies, but we don't know why. And yeah, everything starts to go really crazy at this point. Mm -hmm. Especially the doctor. <laughs> Especially the doctor. So, um, he, the, um, I can't remember what his real name is, but we're going to go ahead and call him a uh, mid-sized sedan. It was yeah. one uh, part where the, the dad was telling the daughter to leave him alone because he was on vacation. He's like, so what's his surname? Sedan? Like, <laughs> you know, like, dude, no, that's not his surname. But anyway, uh, mid-sized was like freaking out because now there was more people on the island and they're dying suspiciously like his girlfriend did. So he just takes off running because we've got unhealed trauma. Uh, he's dealing with like a, um, an illness that can't be cured and the doctor starts chasing him accusatory, right? And it's just, it gets really bad. The racism gets really bad. Like, so the third couple that gets there, they don't have any children. The therapist is a black woman and her husband is an Asian man. And when the, um, doctor straight out accuses him, he's like, we all know that he did something, right? She's like, I really don't like the way this is shaping up because, mm -hmm. you know, she, that racism by that point is like full on in your face. Yeah. And so, so um, she and her husband look at each other like, okay, we got to watch out for this guy right here. Absolutely. And so, um, they try and escape the island through the, through the tunnel system and they can't because every time they go in there, they pass out and end up out on, 
you know, on the on the sandy beach. And so they're trying to figure all all of that out too. It's just really it's really stressful because they can't get off. They try like the um this movie like there's one of the things that like I'm really mad about and like Shalon for this one. I usually give him a lot of grace because I love all of his movies, but on this stranded little island, this little piece of paradise, they find a way to kill the black guy first. I was like, <laughs> really? This is what we're going to do? But I should have seen it coming because he kind of set it up. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of set it up. And so we should have, we should have seen it coming. And it was, it was the doctor, but like, this is when things get really weird because the, like he's like talking to them, the doctor's standing there, and uh, no one, there's no threatening, Wait, nothing. He did not die first. The doctor's mother died first. Oh my god! So the black guy did not die first. Okay, I take it back. In white shell, I still love you. And the dog died before him. Yes. Okay. So he was the third person to die. Okay, 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 okay. Yep, okay. I sit corrected. <laughs> but before he dies, um, the doctor slashed his face and everyone was like, what in the world is wrong with you? And so being that his blood doesn't clot, he's like, I have a hole in my face. And when he takes his hand away, everyone backs up because we saw a giant gap from like yeah. the top of his jaw, all, almost all the way to his lip. And so he's like, what's up with all the faces? Cause he's watching everyone look at him. And the dad's like, well, it's kind of hard to explain. It's kind of hard it to explain. The doctors, uh, when he was slashing him, he went full blown racist because he started yelling about, he's going to come to my house and rob That was him. later. That was when he killed him. Oh, okay. Yeah, but when he first, and no, 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 that was when he killed the, nu the nuclear guy. Remember, he's like, no, no, he's, he said it when he was, um, because he was, <laughs> the fact that we have to talk about all the people that the doctors <laughs> doctor <laughs> Yeah, they had, they should have got rid of his ass when he first started tripping. Yeah, but they couldn't get away. Yeah, I know, because they're all trapped on this one thing. They could have jumped his ass, but they, right. weren't, they weren't that type of people. <sighs> and um, He'd it's, have been tied up. <laughs> or something. Yeah. With all the things that we've seen people do on, like, um, the island. Like, what is that game? We get kicked off the boat and off the island. Survival. Survivor? Yeah. All the stuff we see them do on survival. Yeah, he would have been tied up with something. And so um, it's going to be a little bit of spoiler because there's no way to keep going without it. So spoilers, you guys, if you don't want to hear anymore because it's a really good movie, I think she's going to give it a really good review like me. But um, well, oh, we'll do, let's give our ratings before we go into spoilers. So what would you give it out of, out of uh, 10? I only do a five star number. Oh, okay, well, five yeah. stars. I would give this one a five stars because of the ending. Mm -hmm. It's a double ending, and we'll yeah. talk about that once we get past the spoiler part. Mm -hmm. I mean, par uh, past this part, so that you guys, if you don't want to see the spoilers. Right now, I'll give it a 4.5. Out of? I feel like, out of five. Okay. I, I feel like I might enjoy it more on a second watch. It seems like that type of movie where you would notice certain things that you didn't notice the first time you watch it. So I, I might improve my score after I rewatch it, but right now I would give it a 4.5. Especially for the cinematography. It is, it's if you beautiful. want to talk about a person who loves to use a camera in, in so many different ways, and a lot of the ways that he used it harken back to movies from the 70s in the 60s, oh, I hate And that's movies. another reason why you think it's the environment because there are shots where it's from the sea. Like, mm -hmm. and so like, and it's some, you know, the camera's bobbing in and out of, out of the waves. And so it looks like maybe something is watching them from the sea. And then like, you know, from the cliffs, like, you know, there's shots for, you know, one of the things that I liked about um, how the camera work was like, so, um, and, and so you guys, this is, we're going to start talking about spoilers because we have to. The producers must have been like, in like, do you want a track, a dolly, a jib, or a crane? He's like, yes. all of it. <laughs> yes, all of it. And a drum. Yes, okay? and a drum. <laughs> and so there are scenes where the, um, we're seeing, because like in, on this island, because it's called old, um, people age really quickly. And so there's a scene where we're watching um the first kill scene with the doctor mm -hmm. and they zoom it away and then they bring it back and that person is dead so we don't get to see i'm not sure if this was a, our 
Oh, I don't know what the rating. Right. I'm guessing it was R because that girl went skinny dipping and she was naked, so usually that makes it an R. Yeah, but like it was. There wasn't any cursing in the. Uh, the course. kill scenes were. Yeah, some minimum. of the kill scenes, though, were more brutal because we don't like hear what was going on. Notice we're... how you said brutal and I said minimal. <laughs> <laughs> because if I can't see it, mm -hmm. if I can only hear it and I have to fill in my own gaps, then it makes it brutal. Mm -hmm. And then, like, so the camera pans away to this gorgeous setting, and that's another thing that's like really a strong suit with the way that this movie is shot. The camera pans away to just basically paradise here on earth. And what you're listening to is something horrific happening, but you can't see it. And then it pans back and the act is over. Like I really liked that and it did that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So the reason that um, this is the spoiler part is the children are aging at a, um, a really rapid rate and the dead, um, once the people die, they deteriorate at a really bit. quick. Mm -hmm. And so the nuclear mom is an archaeologist. And so when the mom, no, when the girlfriend, when she was an archaeologist, she worked in the, um, like the archaeology department of a museum. So but she, she would was, see the artifacts when they come no, in. No, no, no. She was still an archaeologist because she did at the Bones, remember? Yeah, but she said it was because of when they bring them to the museum. No, but she dated them. So she, remember when she was talking about this type of composition mm -hmm. will take this long and then this much long. She, so she was not the curator and she wasn't like a hostess. She's, she was an actual, and she was an actual, oh, maybe she, per, she does archeology span and provides the things mm -hmm. to the museum. Yeah. She was an, an actual archeologist. None of these people were uh, mediocre except for the doctor's wife. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so, um, you just called everyone. But imagine you're watching this video and you don't have like a high level job. You just called them me. Oh <laughs> my god, you guys! This is what she, what she meant to say is uh, not a high level professional or what we consider high level professional within our society. Doesn't mean that you're any less of a person because okay. the person who's, who makes my food is the most important person. What I meant <laughs> in this. Um, in this cast, right? Yeah. Everyone in this cast is has a super high mm -hmm. educational level, except for the doctor's wife. Mm -hmm. The doctor's wife would probably be someone that I would hang out with, I'm, like not all the time because she's like high in maintenance and she would get on my nerves. But like, so for an example, we've got a cardiac surgeon, we've got an archaeologist. Her husband was a mathematician, and he knew all these math things because he was um he worked for an insurance company and he used his mathematical statics statistics to see how much of a risk someone was mm -hmm. and then he was able to advise the insurance company how much of a policy that they can perform for them mm -hmm. um we've had the the um the couple the the, ch the childless couple mm -hmm. he was a nurse and she's a, a therapist mm -hmm. and then we have um, a rap star, mm -hmm. you know, who's like, you know, a decent career. So like, there was no, there was only one person in this, in this movie that was like, you know, like the dumb blonde. And she really was just because she I didn't feel, her. I didn't think she was, I actually empath, empathized with her a little bit. I felt bad for her, especially being tied to this dude that like her options I think she felt that her options were limited if she tried to divorce him because you notice it wasn't even on her mind to divorce him. It wasn't on her mind to have an affair or anything. She just well, it was also, she was biting her time. But it could also be because of her medical issue. Because remember, she right, had yeah, the yeah, and that's issue. another thing. Almost everyone had a medical issue um, on that. No, the worst person was the doctor. She still wasn't. A, when she interacted with other people before the shit hit the fan, she was very friendly to people. She was. She was. Nice. She was. And so, like, you know how in the formula of horror movies, mm -hmm. we always have that dumb blonde character, not because your hair is blonde. Mm -hmm. You've seen how many videos where I had super blonde, blonde hair. It's just that, you know, there's always that type of um, element in a horror movie. You've got the, the jock, the geek, the mm -hmm. dumb blonde, the a virgin, you know, kind of like a uh, cabin in the woods. Yeah, you the know, archetypes. Yeah, and so then this movie, in this movie, there's not... There's only one person like that, and that's her. And then the um, model girlfriend from the the rap star 
but she, she didn't say anything. She yeah, was just so really weird. beautiful, and then she went swimming. And yeah, then, that's, that's it. That's all we know about her is that she she smiled at the rapper, and then she jumped in the water to go swimming. We don't know anything about her personality except for that she was dealing with the illness. Um, all of them had illnesses that were, um, what's that word where they're, you can't, they're not going to recover from them. Well, except for the, the, um, the wife in the, what we keep calling the nuclear family, she had a benign tumor, so she would have recovered from that. Well, in the beginning of the movie, it seemed like she was dying. No, because she said, he said to her, you don't even feel anything. It's benign. They've already proven that. Once you have the surgery, it, it's a temporary thing. Hmm. But she was using it to cover up for the fact that she was having an affair. Yeah. She was acting like she wanted to leave him because of her she stress from the surgery. Right. Really, was because she was having an, an affair. affair. Well, we don't learn that until later, later. Mm -hmm. And so, because everything, that's another thing that happens. Because everything speeds up on this island, her benign... Yeah, her tumor grew became way faster. Manipulant. Like, it, it became... Problematic. Just like at first, it was like the size of a golf ball. No, 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 it was a pee at first. Oh wow! And then when she was like something's wrong and she fainted, mm -hmm. the, and that's another thing. The nurse was like, "It's the size of a golf ball." And then when the doctor examined her, he's like, "It's the size of a cantaloupe, right?" And so, and then it started to grow right in front of us. And so the doctor cut her open. But then this is when we find out that he's kind of got dementia because. Um, the wife is in the background, and he's like, hey, did you guys know that uh, Robert De Niro made a movie with R Brando, right? Yeah, Martin Brando. And so the wife is like, you can see her in the background, and we know yeah, now. Yeah, she says, oh, no. Right, and he's got the knife in his hand. And so, but she doesn't, no one picks up on that because everyone is focused on her and this growing tumor. Mm -hmm. And so he cuts along the line so that he can take the tumor out and as, as as soon as he moves the knife away she heals just like when he cut the wrapper he healed right away like when he pulled his hand away mm -hmm. there was nothing right and so that just makes everyone super stressed and so the nurse is like okay this is what we'll do doctor cut again and we will hold her um we will hold open the wound so that you can uh take it out but then he's starting to have uh, more um, dementia episodes like he's floating in and out of like awareness and then this is where um, the nurse absolutely takes over he is directing the doctor on where to cut he's telling the people around him where to hold her skin mm -hmm. and he's the one who reaches in and takes out the tumor and by the time he takes it out it's the size of a watermelon like it's huge and then as soon as everyone moves their hands away um, it, she heals back up and then she wakes up and the doctor, because he's the nurse, because he's married to a psychologist, he picks up on things. And so when she opens his eyes, he's like, it was your husband's decision mm -hmm. to save you, even though he was crying and like, he was like, I don't know what to do. And the doctor was really the one who was like, we need to take it out or she's going to die. And so, but the nurse was like, it was your husband's decision. And that kind of turned their kind of relationship around a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm trying to keep up with the conversation, but I'm almost falling asleep. We did not do like, <laughs> like little kids, like mm -hmm. we're back in high school. So, um, um, do I have anything else to add? Should we talk about uh, the double endings? And then, yeah. 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 So then, so we find out at the end that they put people on this island. They seek them out. Um, the people who are, are suffering from, illnesses that are incurable that's why i believe that she was mm -hmm. her tumor was worse than what she was saying because well it wasn't just incurable it was that they wanted to test out um, medicines and they could test them on people at an accelerated rate rather than having to wait uh years they can do it in a matter of hours but they were testing people who had the diseases that were incurable and so like the, the um host ends up being the head scientist the evil scientist and uh uh, they believe that the children of the nuclear family drowned. And so he calls in the scientists that were observing, and he's like, are you sure that they're dead? And he's like, yeah, they're dead. So he comes back to the lab, and he's like, we need to have a moment of silence for the eight people who just died. And they do have a moment of silence. And then he is cheering up his team. He's telling them, he's like, look, this, like she was just explaining, this um, place of nature is allowing us because it speeds up like 
time. Yeah, so the rapper was the one who was like, for each hour we live, it's like a five hours of our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the dog died unexpectedly because dogs age faster than we do. Mm -hmm. And so like one minute the dog was like, yeah, that'd be up. And the next minute he was dead and no one knew why. And uh, so he was, you know, they were figuring stuff out on the, on the um, island of like why it was speeding up. And so he, the, the, the evil scientist was telling us, he's like, you know what? Remember that we're doing really good. Like we have to, this is why we're doing this. And then he's like, and to top it all off, the trail on top is, and he uh, brings up another scientist, a junior scientist who, because of the last test subject, the, the, the um, psychiatrist, whatever tea they gave her, um, cured her epilepsy. So she was on that island for the equivalent of, they were there for like three days, but it was the equivalent of 16 years. Mm -hmm. And while she was there, she didn't have another uh, um, epilepsy, epileptic episode until her death scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they were super happy about that. They had, they had cured epilepsy and they were super excited because like the next test subject had like, you know, other diseases that, you know, they were hoping to cure. But he did mention to him, can we separate the psychiatrics from the uh, physical medical because they lost, they lost their test subject for because the, of the, blood, the, blood, um, um, the blood clotting issue because of the doctor. And, and that was another thing, another, um, another mental patient was coming mm -hmm. as the next test subject. And he's like, we need to separate them because he, at the end of the day, you know, it's greed, but those are actual scientists, right? And so um, the little boy, when he was still a little boy, um, he was the the doctor. His nephew was also six, and they became friends, mm -hmm. and uh, they were like doing those little coded messages. And he was the one who gave him a code to get him off the island. And so when they got off the island, uh, he remembered that the because um, one of the things when he was asking what's your name and what your occupation, he's like, I'm a cop, and they were like, that's cool. And so when they came back to the main resort he gave a book to the cop that one of the guys, another test subject, was writing down all the people who had been on that island and who had gone missing. And so he gave all that information to the cop and the cop calls the reinforcements, the kids, you know, knock the tea out of the hands of the new arrivals and they're like, this is who we are. They killed our parents, right? And so the police swoop in, everyone's arrested and the children are taken back to the mainland. And so my double ending for me is, all of the advancements that they made on that island is going to be exploited by somebody else. Because you cannot just not ignore that those guys cured epilepsy. It's like the SS doctors, right? They're the ones who created the pap smear, um, created bare aspirin, um, a lot of good things that came from the horrible things that they were doing is still in practice today and was so it the, the ss that did the pap smear or there was a doctor that um used to um experiment on black slave women in america that was did gynecological experiments yeah but there it right. was the ss their brothers um i mm -hmm. can't remember their names but they are the ones who created the pap smear cervical um you know they did a lot is of, it the Mengele? People? No, no, no. Oh, they were they were torturing Jews and they were mm -hmm. regular German doctors. Yeah, and some of them escaped right here to America and some down to Brazil. Yeah, and so like you know like bear like a lot of pharmaceutical um, pills that we take today are from the um, experiments that those doctors were creating. And so here you have a team who kind of they kind of are torturing people you know psychologically but you have this place that allows them to do the research in a third of a time there's no way that they're not going to continue to research there there's yeah. no way yeah Eth ethics be damned if this was real life yeah pharmaceuticals would definitely do some stuff like this if they had access to it yep, yeah yeah and so the ones who were doing it in secret they're all going to jail but that island because of of the advances and they made a lot of them um there's no way that they're gonna shut it down mm -hmm. there's no way
And then it's just kind of sad because these kids, they went to Platinum Island at 6 and 11, and now they're 40 and 45, like yeah. their whole entire lives. There's so much about this movie that we're not telling you just because we want you to see it, except, you know, when you fell in love. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That was kind of cute. <laughs> that was kind of cute. Um, but then it was tra like it was immediately tragic, yeah. tragic after that. It's just when you like sit and think about like the implications of, you know, growing old a whole lifetime in a couple of days, like how is a 40 year old who has the life experience of a six year old going to mm -hmm. function in society? Like he doesn't even know how to spell all the way. And what you're expected to go get a 40 hour job? Like it's just it's inc it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I loved it. <laughs> that is not about the movie. That is about it being like three o'clock in the morning. It really is three <laughs> o'clock in the morning, you guys. And yeah. so um, this is where we're gonna let Sasha take us off the air. Yeah. So um, Latchkey Kids. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Latchkey Kids and Drive In Mutants. Thank you for uh, making it to the end of this video. We have some more fun things in store for you. I won't tell you what it is because I want it to be a surprise. But it will be about our adventures in Florida. That's what it's called, adventures in Florida. The adventures in Florida. <gasps> so, oh, I will say you don't necessarily need to see this in a movie theater. I think this would have worked fine if it was released to HBO or Netflix. And I, I probably would have uh, been more relaxed, you know, laying down, chilling, watching it. But we're stuffing our faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it did look beautiful on the big screen because it's if you like scenic photography, if you like things shot on location, I think you'd enjoy this. And the sound. Just yeah, the, the sound, sound is beautiful. Great. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, until our next review, you guys. Ciao. Bye.